Yo, the funny thing is every time I talk about split tour derbies, I always have at least one or two guys in the comments, man, saying something like, I don't really like split tour derbies because they remind me of the female genitalia. I mean, I never really look at it like that, but since you mentioned it, shouldn't that be a reason for you to like them even more? <laughs> Intro. Yo, what up? My name is Vladimir Rache from ChaseAndBrother.com. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to a new brand called Octenth, and it's a new shoe maker out of China in collaboration with Sons of Henry. I'm very, very excited to talk to you about this new brand, and I'm very excited to show you the shoes. It's a new pair of Split Toe Derbies. Split Toe Derbies are becoming my favorite style of shoes. Actually, not becoming. Split Toe Derbies are actually my favorite style of shoes. And the crazy part about it is last year around this time, I didn't own that one pair, and now I can't seem to get enough of them. So I'm very excited to talk to you about Act 10. I'm very excited to show you my new pair of Split Toe Derbies, and um, I think a lot of you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised. Now, before we get to the shoes, I want to give you a little bit of a background about who Act 10th is. Even though Act 10th is a brand new brand, the couple behind it has been making shoes for a long, long time. They come from a long lineage of shoemakers. In 2017, they went solo and opened up their own workshop called Zibao Shoemaker. Zibao makes shoes for a lot of other brands that you guys are probably familiar with. Earlier this year, they decided to start their own shoe brand while at the same time still making shoes for other companies. So when they started Act 10, the vision was for the brand to be an international brand and not just be known in China. So that's how they got in contact with Tom from Sons of Henry. And also Tom already has a lot of contact in Europe as far as leather is concerned. Sons of Henry is not just responsible for ordering and distribution. Tom from Sons of Henry also help design the patterns and the last for Act 10. So right now the only way to get Act 10 shoes is through the Sons of Henry website. We'll be talking a little bit more about that later. If you guys remember when I did the unboxing last year for my first pair of Sons of Henry, I mentioned how Sons of Henry is able to source some of the best leathers around, leathers you would find on shoes that cost three or four times as much as Sons of Henry. That's one thing that I've heard people mention before when it comes to leather quality of Chinese made shoes. They're not as good as their European counterparts. So entering into a partnership with Tom from Sons of Henry, that was a really smart move by the people at Act 10. Because once again, Tom is an authority when it comes to sourcing some of the best leathers around. So this is exactly what you can expect from Act 10. Now, if you're wondering what's the difference between Sons of Henry and Act 10, Sons of Henry is more of an entry level brand where the shoes retail between three and four hundred dollars. The shoes are good gear welted versus Act 10 or hand welted and hand lasted stitches per inch which is not something that i usually talk about but a lot of hand welted shoes typically have about anywhere from four to six some brands probably have eight but that's probably the max that i've seen and with act 10 shoes the stitches per inch are 10 and a half another feature of act 10 is the waist area is really really tight because of the hand soon outsole. Act 10 shoes also features Bark 10 leather soles. If you're not familiar, Bark 10 soles are supposed to last a really, really long time. The lining and the sock liner is a Vesh 10 calf leather. So these are some of the things that you'll find in Act 10 shoes that you wouldn't find in a brand like Sons of Henry or even a brand like Carmina, for example. But that doesn't mean that those shoes are bad. It just means that you can't expect to pay the same thing that you pay for those shoes for a pair of Act 10 shoes, you know what I'm saying? Now at this point, I think you have a pretty good idea of who Act 10 is and what they offer. Now let's get to the shoes. Act 10 shoes come in a draw style green box, very similar to the polo that I'm wearing today actually. <laughs> I didn't plan this, man. And in gold lettering, it has the Act 10 logo, which is an O and a T. This is Act 10 hand welted for Sons of Henry. Now let's check out the shoes, man. As I was saying, this is a drawer style box. Very similar to the one from Yale style that you guys have seen me unbox. Very sturdy box. It also comes in green shoe bags, two of them. And it's also in gold lettering. It says hand welted shoemaker, Shanghai, which is where the workshop is for Act 10. And these are the shoes right here, man. These shoes are really, really incredible, man. So 
This is their OC01 model, which is their most popular model right now, which is a split to a derby. These shoes are really, really something else, man. One thing I can tell you about split to derbies, man, I don't think anybody really started off really liking split to derbies. I think that most guys that like split to derbies started off not liking them. But once you actually start getting into them, there's no stopping, man. To me, this is the most beautiful style of shoe there is. It's also a very versatile shoe. Although I don't really plan to wear mine with a suit, but you can definitely wear it with more casual suits, like flannel suits, for example. And this one is made out of a burgundy hatch grain from Holwyn. And as I was saying before, Tom from Sons of Henry is responsible for sourcing the leathers for Act 10. Now, just to be clear, out of the 25 leathers that you can get from Act 10, the burgundy hatch grain is not one of them. So these were part of a group order. This leather is not available on the website. Only way you can get this leather now to Act 10 is if you were to do a group order. We'll talk about group orders a little bit later on, but to do a group order, you need at least four people. But there are plenty of other leathers to choose from. I just wanna make sure that's clear so that you're not disappointed if you wanna order one and they don't have that leather, you know what I mean? As I was saying last week when I unboxed my burgundy Oxford, I like burgundy shoes, but I don't like them to be too red. I like them to have a really dark tint to them. I feel like that makes them more versatile. This one is definitely on the darker side of burgundy. This is darker than the Axford that I unboxed last week. But this is a hatch grain versus the other one was hand painted. So two totally different leathers. These shoes are absolutely beautiful, man. Actent has four different lasts to choose from. They have the Sheng, which is a soft square last with a straight shape. They have the High, which is a soft round last with a straight shape. They have the Yuwang, which is a soft square last with a curved shape. And they have the Pew, which is a soft round last with a curved shape. So this is the Pew last. And as you can see, this is what I mean by the curved shape. How uh, this part has like a banana shape to it. It kind of sticks out a little bit. Versus the Sheng and the High or more straight, as you can see in this picture. I went with the Pew last because to me, a split to a derby looks a little bit better in a round last as opposed to a square last. Although I might be in the minority for that because the most iconic split to derby is the Dover from Edward Green. Those shoes retail for $1,600. But the most popular last for the Dover is the 606 last, which is a soft square last. But I feel like with this leather, and this style, it looks excellent on the Pew Last, if you ask me. These shoes are really, really gorgeous, man. Like, when I opened the box and I saw these shoes, I couldn't believe it, man. I'm like, wow. Like, I was expecting for the shoes to be nice, but whenever you're dealing with a new brand, these were the first shoes ever produced for the collaboration of Actent and Sons of Henry. So I had really high hope for the shoes, but when Tom sent me pictures of the shoes when they were finished, I was really blown away, but when I opened the box, I was even more shocked. Like, wow, these shoes are really, really nice. The finishes are really, really good. This is what happens when you have a lot of handwork involved. These shoes feature a hand-stitched apron. So as I was saying, there are 25 different leather options. The burgundy hatch grain is not one of those options because this one was a special order for the introductory shoes. The only way you can get the burgundy hatch grain to our tent is if you were to do a group order. For a group order, there have to be four participants and all four has to pick the same exact leather and the same style. Now, as far as the sole, there are four different options. You can pick a round waist, you can pick a fiddle back waist, you can pick a day night sole, or you can do a vibram topi. So in my case, I went with a round waist and I also added a topi as well as metal toe tips. If you guys remember the last Pito Derby that I unboxed, they did a really bad job with the screws of the metal toe tip. This is how it should be. The screws are not supposed to be sticking out. As you can see, these screws are flush with the metal toe tips, exactly the way that they're supposed to be. One thing that you should know about all the Actent Lasts is they all come with a pretty high end step, very similar to a lot of the Italian last. So if you have a really low end step, these last probably won't fit you well. I'm sure that they'll be developing more last in the future. But as of right now, if you have a low end step, I would stay away from Actent because all the last that they have have a pretty high end step, which is good for me uh, because once again, I have a high end step, but not good for you if you have a low one, you know what I mean? 
Now one thing about Actin, they have two different shoe trees to choose from. Both of them are lasted, but they have a regular spring loaded shoe trees and they also have a hinged shoe tree. So this is a hinged one, as you can see here. This fit the shoes really, really well and they cost a little bit extra compared to your spring loaded shoe trees, you know what I mean? How much do Actin shoes cost? Actin shoes start at 520 euros, which is $605. That's a really great price for hand welted shoes, by the way. But if you wanted a hand stitched apron like you have here, that comes with a $50 upcharge. So that's something to be mindful of. But if you can do a group order, once again, a group order is four or more people, then the shoes will be $50 less. If you're interested in a group order, I would say to go to the Sons of Henry thread on styleform.net. There you can pitch an idea for a group order to see if other guys want to join. That way you guys can save yourselves $50. Or if you and your friends want to do a group order, then you can just reach out to Tom and try to get it going this way. Once again, for a group order, everybody has to take the same style and everybody has to take the same leather. Everything else could be individualized. So for example, like I was saying, there are four different lasts to choose from. You guys don't have to pick the same last, which is really, really good. The sole finishes, everybody can pick their own. Now, Split Toe Derby is really the shoe enthusiast's shoe. I'm not saying you have to be a shoe enthusiast to like a Split Toe Derby, but guys that are shoe enthusiasts, for the most part, are really, really into Split Toe Derbies, man. And the crazy thing about Split Toe Derbies is most of us as shoe enthusiasts starting off not really liking them. With me, what happened was last year around this time, me and Tom was talking about me doing an unboxing for Sons of Henry. Actually, shout out to Tom because he was the first guy that truly believed in me because at that time, I didn't even really have a thousand subscribers. So he was the first to really believe in me to send me some free shoes to unbox for you. So I really appreciate that, Tom. And ever since then, man, those shoes are the shoes that I've been wearing the most in my collection. And I can't get enough of them, man. Now, as far as comparing those to the Sons of Henry shoe, I do have the Sons of Henry shoes here. So let's take a look. Now, this is not going to be a fair comparison. The Sons of Henry shoes are almost a year old. Once again, I wear these shoes all the time versus the Octane shoes are brand new. So don't expect a fair comparison here. Obviously, the Octane shoes are going to look better. But here are a few differences between Octane and Sons of Henry. Um, the biggest difference that you're going to notice right off the bat is in the apron. So with Sons of Henry, once again, Sons of Henry is more of an entry level brand. Currently, their split toe derbies are around $350, I wanna say. And one way that Sons of Henry is able to keep the prices so low for such a great product is by offering a machine soon apron. So as you can see right here, this is what's called a hand soon apron. You can see all the craftsmanship that goes into making a hand soon apron, hence the $50 upcharge. But with Sons of Henry, this is a machine soon apron. Now, a machine soon apron doesn't mean that the shoes are bad. There are actually some brands that still offer a machine soon apron and that costs over a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? That's just a style thing. Personally, I prefer a hand soon apron. I just think that it looks better, but that's one thing that you'll find with Actin that you will not find with Sons of Henry. The split is also different. So on the Actin, this is more of a reverse split versus on the Sons of Henry, the split is definitely more pronounced as you can see. The letters, they're both grain, but they are different. On the Sons of Henry, this is a walnut country calf. Same exact calf as you'll find in some Dovers from Edward Green. Once again, those shoes retail for $1,600. A couple of videos ago, I was saying how I'm not a huge fan of soft leather because they're roll as opposed to crease. So the country calf is one of those leather that's very soft. It actually rolls as opposed to creasing. Versus Hatch Grain, even though I haven't worn the shoes yet, those will crease as opposed to roll. So yeah, so that's the comparison of Actin and Sons of Henry. They fit me pretty similarly. And as you guys know, I have flat feet and some of the rack shoes don't fit me. My Sons of Henry shoes fit me great and the Actin fits me really well as well. But as I was saying, Split Toe Derby's are my favorite style of shoes. So currently I have this one, I have the Sons of Henry. I have a black pair that replaced the previous black pair that I unboxed a couple weeks ago. I'll be unboxing that one soon as well. And I also have a brown suede on the way as well. So starting at around $600, for a shoe that's hand lasted and hand welted is one of the best value in the industry at the moment. And when you look at the finish of the shoe, they really, really did a nice job. It's not perfect, but it's really, really, really good. Last year, when I did the unboxing for Sons of Henry, Tom had offered a 5% discount using the code VLAD, V-L-A-D. He's extending the same offer this time for Act 10. 
So with the code VLAD, V-L-A-D, you'll be able to get 5% off your Acton shoes. So how do you go about ordering Acton shoes? It's pretty easy. You just have to go to the Sons of Henry website. I'll be linking that in the description below. And if you scroll down, you're going to see an option where you have to enter your name, phone number, and email address, as well as a message. So in that message, that's where you're going to enter what kind of shoes that you're interested in, and then Tom will be in contact with you. And also in the same message, that's where you want to enter the code VLAD, V-L-A-D, to get your 5% off. Currently, the turnaround time for Act 10 shoes are four to six weeks. I would say to lean towards the six week more than the four week. I think six weeks a little bit more realistic. Now, Act 10 don't only make split toe derbies. I know that not all guys are into split toe derbies yet. <laughs> But um, they have about 15 styles to choose from, man, and only one of them is a split to derby, so... You have plenty of other options. They have plenty of Oxfords. Uh, they can make boots. They can make loafers. They have everything, man. So uh, this is just the first style, and once again, the most popular. That's what it's called, the OC01. Um, but there are plenty of different options to choose from, man. So yeah, man, let me know in the comments how you feel about Act 10th. Are you going to give them a try? And if you do, definitely use my code VLAD, V-L-A-D, to get your 5% off. But a pair of shoes that's hand welted, hand lasted, costing around $600. And if you're getting a split to a derby, starting around $650, this is a really, really great deal, man. You will not regret these shoes. These shoes are excellent. Yeah, man, I highly, highly recommend these shoes, man. Highly recommend these shoes. Now, if you think that you've seen these shoes before, it's because you have. A couple weeks ago, when I made the video for my black green pair from Hephaestus, I had mentioned how the shoe fell short in a couple different categories compared to my other split toe derby. So this was the other shoe that I was showing in that video. One thing that's really beautiful about these shoes, this is a seamless heel. Not all the Actent models come with a seamless heel, so I'm not exactly sure how they decide which style is going to get it. And the Vibram Topi is something that I have on all my split toe derbies. I just feel like as a casual shoe, this looks really nice. It also makes the shoe more versatile as far as wearing it in harsh conditions. It's also going to make the sole last longer. And the great thing about a rubber topi, even though it's rubber, it's still pretty streamlined. So I do happen on wearing them. I feel like burgundy goes really well with darker grays. So I'll probably be leaning towards that. Like for example, medium gray kind of leans more towards the darker gray. So I'll probably be wearing them with those. And I also have a pair of charcoal flannel gray from Natalino that I unboxed a couple months ago. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it somewhere up here. I'll also included in the description. And I'll probably be wearing them with those as well. But yeah, it's pretty much unlimited, man. These shoes are very versatile. They are burgundy, but they are dark burgundy, so I can see me wearing them with all sorts of different colors, man. I really love the shoe trees also, as I was saying before. This is a hinged shoe tree. Take it out to show you. The shoe tree is not only hinged, it's also hollowed, as you can see here. So it's very, very light, but it still fills the shoe up pretty good. Uh, it has the Actent logo etched right here. But yeah, man, this is a really premium shoe. Vest and leather right here for the sock liner and the lining. But yeah, man, these shoes are really incredible, man. Let me know in the comments how you feel about Actent. Are you going to give them a try? I really feel that you should. And um, let me know how you feel about Speed to Derbies, man. <laughs> Split toe derbies are very controversial, man, but I can tell you now, uh, once you get your first pair of split toe derbies, you're never really going to turn back. To me, this is the best style of shoe ever created. I'm really looking forward to, to wear these shoes, man. So hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe, or everybody gonna think that you're a hater. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.